Hello, everyone. Thank you for checking out this special episode of Really Dicey. This is Manny, and I am here with... I'm John Wick. <laughs> <laughs> Fame creator of 7C. Uh, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about... This is very interesting. Tortoni's Guide to Spell Jamming. Uh, Reimagining yeah. and Customizing uh, Spell Jammers for 5th Edition D&D. You know, it's it's funny because sometimes when books come out from different systems, different games, uh, we sometimes think, what if someone did this? What if this, like, you know, what if a, this, uh, a writer from this series did these books instead? You know, it's kind of like one of those, like, fan daydreams. And, you know, when Spelljammer came out, uh, the fifth edition, and looking at the ships, I couldn't help thinking, like, I wonder what, what 7C would do with this. Like, what would John Wick do with this? And then, he, behold, we have this book coming out. Um <laughs> Uh, and I know Mike Curry is also part of the um, mm -hmm. uh, the Seven C line as well. Uh, can, you, can you tell us how how this came to be? Uh, it came about because I am a my big fan of Spelljammer. I, I'm a big fan of big ships flying through the ether through wild space, and uh, I it was one of the things about Second Edition D and D that I really liked. I I really liked Ravenloft. Uh, and I really liked Spelljammer. I also really liked Birthright. I, Birthright is close to my heart. Um, but I really like the the visual of it. I like the the weird H.R. Giger meets Roger Dean meets, you know, like that the psychedelic 60s, you know, landscape where uh, it's not outer space. It's actually wild space, which means that it has that lava lamp you know, uh, if you watch Barbarella, what outer space looks like in like 60s and 70s uh, psychedelic movies. I love that stuff. And I got a hold of the new Spelljammer set uh, because I love Spelljammer. And uh, I was disappointed that there weren't rules for kitting out your Spelljammer, for customizing mm. it. And I felt, well, because that's something that I would definitely do if I was doing, you know, something like this. So I got together with Mike Curry, who's the lead designer on, I'm the creative lead on 7C, and he's the lead designer on 7C. And we got together and we we looked at the books and we said, okay, what could we do with the with what we have? Because we didn't want to come up with, you know, like throw everything out. We're like, okay, th these are the ships that are included in the in the book. What can we do to to mod them in such a way like I want my scorpion ship to be faster okay or i want it to be more maneuverable or i want it to you know whatever right how do we do that and that's what essentially what the book is it's a reimagining of the ships themselves and but they're all the same ships and uh a, a very a very uh a simple breakdown of if you want your ship to go faster, you take off this much armor. If you want it to be harder, you put you take off this much speed and you add to its you add to its armor and things like that. So customizing the ships in that way. And then from that, we also included a few other things like a few new magic items, uh, four new backgrounds that you can take spelljammer specific, spelljammer realm specific backgrounds, and uh, a bunch of other stuff too. And that's that's what it is. So is there, so it sounds like you also, besides um, having new options for the same ships that are on the Spelljammer 5 ebooks, um, you also kind of tweaked the rules a bit. Am I understanding yeah. that correctly? So what we did is, um, so what we, what I did was I made an Excel spreadsheet of all the ships and essentially broke them down to these ships are, you know, in the, in the spreadsheet, you can take a look at all the numbers and where they all land out. And the numbers to me seemed a little bit arbitrary, like, like, and, and, and dragging out my old copy of Spelljammer, the Spelljammer box, I was like, yeah, these are essentially the same stats from second edition Spelljammer. And I really felt that they could take, like, we could take another pass at it and kind of tune them up a little bit. And, and so the, the Spelljammers themselves are there. They have new movement speed armor class damage threshold things that that we felt like if we were custom tailoring it ourselves what we would do and and then we also uh 
uh, took a look at the uh, the the ship to ship rules, and being you know the guys who make Seventh Sea, we're all like, we think we can add a couple things here that'll make ship to ship ship fighting a little more interesting, at least for us. And so we we revised how the movement rules work, and revised how how a ship to ship combat works. And one of the things that Mike Curry, Mike Curry, like, th it's not just that his name is alphabetically first. Mike had a whole ton of really good ideas because Mike is is a, a big 5e player. Hmm. And although I have the 5e books and I've run it, I am not, I, I do not have the confidence in my ability to go into the game and, like, make really significant, you know, insightful changes. And that's what Mike is for. And so what we did is he, for example, I came up with this idea of the ships have to move forward a certain amount of space before they can turn. And because they're ships, they can't turn on a dime. They have to, you know, and I had this, it was simple, but it was still like this movement thing. And Mike, and Mike looked at it and he said, why don't you just make it a skill check? Hmm. I was like, oh yeah. So turning the the uh turning a spell jammer is a skill check it is a um uh, uh and 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 when when you make if you make the skill check you can you can successfully make a turn and all that kind of stuff so mike brought a whole lot of insight into the into like very elegant ways to do the kind of crazy stuff that i wanted to do hmm. is there I, I know you mentioned that um that uh you're familiar with second edition Spelljammer. Mm -hmm. Was there anything from those books, from those uh, box sets of old, uh, that you incorporated into this that, that you didn't see in the in the, the new Five E book set? No, we didn't because we wanted to keep to what was in Five E. We like gave ourselves. We wanted to really limit the project. We wanted to like something that we could do over the weekend, which is kind of what we did, um, because we wanted it to be small scale. The book is about 29, 29 pages. And uh, and most of those are occupied. Most of that space is occupied with the ships themselves, like the re-envisioning of the ships. Um, but we didn't we we I have this whole section, for example, of stuff from the previous books that I that um, we want that I, I had an idea to put in the book. But once we looked at the scope of what we wanted to do, we're like, no, let's just start with the basics. Let's start with the base ships reimagining them, reconfiguring their stats a little bit, um, giving new movement rules and new combat rules. And then if that, you know, if that turns out to be successful, we can start adding more to it. Mm -hmm. So the scope of the book is very, is very narrow. And, and, uh, and that was really because we're doing seventh C stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. and we're like, we have really have a weekend to do this and really it turned out to be two weekends uh, but uh, uh, that's that that was why we limited it to that. But for fans of Seven C, um, is there anything in this that they will probably they will probably be familiar with or seen before in your in your other books? They'll be familiar with, I think, the tone of it. Uh, for example, uh, the author of the book, uh, his voice is peppered throughout the book. There's a lot of quotations from various characters. I I am a big fan as just as a game master in general of of my play dirty principles of and the like the first principle is get your characters to fall in love with something and then put it in peril. And so for me, uh the big thing was making the players fall in love with ships. We fall in love with, with their ship. So one of the things that we did is we decided to make the helm of the ship, which is how you control each of the ships. The helm of the ship is got a kind of like animal intelligence. So it has a personality because dogs and cats and, you know, and other pets have personalities. And if you give the ship a personality, then that means that you can give it nu nuances and quirks and things like that. And so the ship becomes like a pet. And it becomes something that the players can fall in love with. And then when they get into a fight, they'll be, or if, if there's an opportunity for a fight, they'll be like, do we really want to put our, you know, our friend, the ship, which has a name because ships have names, you know, in jeopardy. And so like a lot of that, those kind of principles are in the set. 
in you know the the kind of like John Wick you know uh, voice is there, and mm. I think that that more than anything else is is what fans of of mine would would look for. Oh, okay, excellent. Um, is this going to be your only um, uh, book for Spelljammer currently at the moment? Are you are you thinking about maybe something else in the near future? We do have more material that we wrote that we haven't put in it. Um, and it just depends if, if it does well, then yeah. And if it, you know, I mean, if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't sell the way we want it to, you know, who knows, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, we may do a follow-up just to, you know, just because it was fun. This was a really fun thing that we did. And we were laughing and smiling all the way through it mm -hmm. because it was, it was something that um, it was kind of like, it was kind of like the ginger between the sushi. We've been working really hard on seven C stuff. And, and then the weekend showed up and we're like, okay, we get to work on this weird ships in, in space thing for, for a brief amount of time before we go back into the, before we go back into seven C. Um, but yeah, we have more material that, you know, if, if, uh, if the players want, if people say, I really like this, and I want to see more, we can, we can definitely put out more. Excellent, excellent. Speaking of Seven C, if I may ask, sure. Um, what's what? Where are we currently with with new products? Um, I know Katai is currently close, really close to um, yeah, the, being printed. The only thing, so Katai yeah, is really close to being printed. Uh, the only thing that we're working on is uh, the credits because we're going through the book and getting. Um, uh, we're fixing all the credits in the book for the people who wrote the first version of the book. And then Mike and I kind of went through and did a second version of the book and we're getting everybody's sign off on things. And that's really all we're waiting for really is just people getting back to us going, you know, this, that, and the other thing, uh, as for standard seven C, uh, the, uh, land of a thousand nations, which is the North American supplement is currently in editing. And uh, we're, that's going to come back at the end of October. Hmm. And then uh, 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 we're also in the middle of art direction. So we're sending art descriptions out to artists and we're waiting for the sketches to come back. Because the way that works is that we send out art descriptions, artists send us like one or two sketches for the piece. We make notes, we send it back to them, and then they send us a color, like a color sketch. And then we send notes and then we send that back and then we get the, then we get the final piece. So that's the process that we're in for land of a thousand nations. The text, as soon as the edited text comes back, I'm going to be releasing that edited text to all of the backers. Hmm. And like I said, that's at the end of October. Uh, it may come in earlier. Depends on, on the, on, on the editor's schedule. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see where we go from there. Oh, excellent. Excellent. So one last question. Sure. What's your favorite uh, ship? What's your favorite spell jammer? Uh, I have a soft spot, soft spot in my heart for the Nautiloid, which is the Illithid uh, spell jammer. I love mind flayers. I think they're fantastic. I mean, it's the, the old Lovecraftian, you know, Cthulhu mythos fan in me is, is the, the mind flayers. And uh, when we were writing them, when we were kind of re-envisioning the Nautiloid, like we said, all of the helms have an AI. And the AI of Nautiloid ships needs to be subjugated mm. because that's the Illithid, right? And the fact that we designed them so that their tentacles grab your ship and hold it in place, and then they send over a whole bunch of, you know, boarding stuff to in you know to capture all of your crew you know because we're going to eat your brains you know all that kind of stuff <laughs> so uh but yeah that's that uh although i i also the way that we re-envisioned the wasp was was a lot of fun too it's it's one of the speediest ships and the mechanic that mike came up for it was really cool because that thing just burns it it is the little speedster it's a little roadster uh, the the drag racing ship that just goes straight across the board, and mm. that was a, a fun one too. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us uh, about this new book, uh, and I'm all, also always looking forward to your new Seven C stuff. Um, to uh, our viewers, um, I'll put a link in the description below. Again, John, thank you so much, 
And um, everyone out there, be safe. We'll see you next time. Take care.